Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Owl! Oh, the many monsters of this island fear that the windfish is about to awaken. The monster's power is real. They may conquer the island and destroy their foes. That day may come soon. Now go to the mountain tower. Fly like a bird. Hoot hoot! Well, that was a conversation. But yeah, welcome back to Let's Play Link's Awakening DX, everyone. And now we're back in Megan Village, because now we have the level 2 power bracelet. We can investigate this. Here sleeps the flying rooster. And find a hidden cave. Kind of hard to believe that people didn't know this was here, but... Nah, well, then again, that, that, that's a grave marker more than anything, I suppose. Either we're going to want to get the ocarina out with the frog song of soul equipped. And play it! Wow, the rooster has recovered! He seems very friendly. Indeed he is. You can actually pick him up and fly for a decent amount of chunk of- a decent amount of chunk, yeah. A decent chunk of time. And now we're back at the uh, telephone booth that we started like part 6 or 7 back at. Because we want to head back to Candlelit Castle and fly over these holes. You can only do this now without some uh, glitching in the original Link's Awakening. And doing this you get 20 rupees or Secret Seashell number 23. And now we're back just south of where I first entered Mount Tomaranch a few parts back. Oh, hello again, Owl. Hoot hoot. Your path is not easy, but you are almost there. Go east. The wind face is getting restless. I think my bait is progressively getting worse without practice. I should do that more often. Either way, on Mount Tomaranch, we actually want to head back into this cave we were in earlier. Why? Well, because this is one of the best ways to get to the east. Just flat and simple that. I actually remember when I used to play this game a lot more when I was a kid. I didn't do some of the stuff that I did in Mount Tom Ranch earlier until now, which made uh, Trade Quest kind of annoying. But hey, we can finally get this treasure chest with the hookshot. You can also use the flying rooster, but I just prefer the hookshot because that's technically what you're supposed to use. Hence why there's a skull over there. And now I want to head out here. Now, I always tend to partially forget where I have to go here, purely because it's not exactly obvious. You have to head up here. I know you might be saying, Kyle, it's a giant ladder stairway thing. I want to go up it. I am very stupid. Sometimes. I we want to head in here. In fact, we have to head in here. And here we can use the flying rooster to fly over these holes. I think it's possible to do them all in one session, but I'm not exactly sure what the... Uh, actually, yes it is. I just do that right there. I'm not exactly sure if the uh, flying rooster has a stamina meter of sorts. Like his cousins would in a... Like his cousin would in a Link and a Oracle of Seasons. Ooh, we've got the bird key! We need that to enter the, uh, the next dungeon, so you might as well just grab that now. That's why I cut out. And now we want to head east a couple of screens. Why? Well, first I want to show this off. This is the Cuckoo Man's house. Or Brewster Man, whatever his name is. Wow, amazing, that rooster's actually flying, just like I said, huh? Have you tried to hold him over your head? Click, look. Here's how you're supposed to learn about the rooster, because you can talk to him before this. And he also, but uh, I already knew it was there, so I went and got it ahead of time. Though, fun little fact, he looks like Luigi, like Terra, and looks like Mario. And here there is actually something to get. The boulder on the top right here, underneath it, would be Secret Seashell number 24 if we didn't get the level 2 sword. So that's sadly not 20 rupees for me. Oh well. Like I said, the money is vastly, fairly useless at this point. Unless you need to buy ammunition at the store, it's, there's not much to it. Now I have to wonder exactly what kind of hook the hookshot has if it's able to grab onto almost any given material. Anyway, here we can do something important. You see that little inlet down there on the bottom? Bomb it. Because... 
if you know cave uh, coordinates correctly, you might be able to realize that this leads to the right, which finally, finally leads to hard piece number 11. We saw that in like, what, part five initially? So we finally got it in part 13. Took long enough. Two dungeons left. And we're doing the next dungeon this part, by the way. So, yeah. That took long enough to get. And now I want to finally head back down here. Technically speaking, that's right. You actually technically never have to go up there. But I always go up there because you're... I don't know why. Shut up. Either way, you can see that little suspicious patch of ground right there. So, just go with your first instinct and bomb it. I just like showing off the fact that it does dingling sound effect instead of just the ding. I wonder if that actually has any credence in real life. Uh, different sounding walls can be exploded. Okay, now here's a bit of an interesting thing. All five of these chests contain 20 rupees. However, if you leave the room with only one of them open and you come back in, they'll all be opened. So you want to grab all five at once, by the way, so you can see chest number 25. So what I do here is exit the cave without grabbing them, and then come back in so I can grab all five of them from the bottom, because that's the only way you can grab all five. Still though, kind of an odd place for a hundred rupees, even in this kind of formation. Usually, Zelda games would do it that there's like one chest of 100, not five of 20, so that's kind of an odd design choice there. Then again, I suppose it's more of a puzzle than anything, so I'll let it pass. Not that I can go back in time or change it or, or anything, because, you know, this game's... I think around 20 years old, uh, in its original version. No, I think plus that, because uh, I think the Game Boy came out in 91. I don't want to say this was launched, but... Huh, let me look that up. Uh, actually... Well, first off... Yeah, that was a owl statue I missed. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, wow, June 6th, 1993, that is... Uh, let me do math here. Yeah, 23 years, wow. Interesting. Time's a weird thing like that, you never really think about how old games are until you think about it, you know what I mean? Unless that game is Pong, and you're like, this is one of the oldest games in existence, no matter what. Then you play Space Wars, and you're like, how am I playing Space Wars? This was on a very weird thing. Ah, game design and history class was very fun. Possibly the only class I've ever gotten a 100 on throughout the entirety of its goings-on. That was horribly explained. Grammar, but yeah. By the way, that cave I just blew up is a fairy's fountain. Either way, we want to go into this cave because we can finally exit up here and end up on the top of Mount Tomaranch. This is the highest point in the Northeast. And here is the Eagle's Tower. Which is the next dungeon, if you couldn't tell. So let's put in that key. Well, that was... I don't even know how that worked. Level 7, Eagle's Tower. This is probably, in terms of layout, one of the hardest dungeons in the game, if not the hardest. First off, we want to come over to the east and kill these two like likes, because doing so will drop a key which we can immediately use. Now, you can actually hit that crystal switch there with your boomerang if you're good enough and get that treasure chest early, but I'm not going to. And here I forgot that I don't have the stone beak early. Now, you can see this iron ball here. I'm gonna grab it now and start something with it, but you're not... I, mean, I recommend you don't do that until a little bit later. Why? The ball there is one of the biggest gimmicks about this place. Uh, there are four pillars located on this floor throughout the entire floor. That was poorly, that was terrible grammar. There's four pillars on this floor. And what that Alice statue tried to say is that essentially, we need to break all four of them. Here's number one. When you break it, throw the ball at the pillar. 
Now, I recommend you just leave the ball here if you broke that pillar, but I, for some reason, decided to try and take it with me down the pit, which you can't do. Either way, now we're back in the first form. We want to head west. Correct in my notes? Yes, we want to head west. And you can jump to get that heart for some reason if you want to. And south. And if we're not doing that, we can come over here and finally get the stone beak. Now, the biggest part about the Eagle's Tower, besides destroying those pillars, is the fact that it is four floors long, uh, high, and each floor is getting uh, progressively smaller. Oh, what the? Kirby? Meet Anti Kirby from Dreamland. Nah, it's gotta be a coincidence. He tries to suck you in, but honestly, he's not too hard. Jump off the floor above to reach the chest on the table. Table? You mean ledge? Okay, then. But the other part, biggest gimmick about this place is the fact that there is a lot of uh, crystal switch hitting in order to get the uh, blocks in, or uh, in their right position for you. I stuttered a lot there. Either way, now we want to head back upstairs, but not before getting this fairy. I do wonder why they gave that to Sparks as well as anti-fairies in this game, because that's usually only one or the other. But we can also get this, which is the dungeon item. We've got the mirror shield! We can now turn back the beams we couldn't block before. Here's the interesting thing. Unlike a lot of Zelda dungeon items, we never use that in this dungeon. We use that to get into the next one, actually. Either way, we can fall down that hole and come up here for a small key. Kind of a ornate place for a small key because it's all up on its lonesome up there, but oh well. Also, for the anti-Kirby's, you can either use four boomerang shots or bombs. Oh, great, these things again. And that for doing that, we get the dungeon map, which, as I will look at right now, is four floors high, getting progressively smaller. That's an interesting dungeon design, though. Uh, what other game had that? I want to say... Link's Awakening? Not Link's Awakening. Link to the Past. Either way, we were back in the room where I destroyed the first pillar, so I went back right and got the ball so we can come down here and destroy the second one. Now I want to come up here, push this block, head west, and carry the ball with us for a bit longer. But in this next room, we see the return of an old enemy, the three of a kind guys. These guys we haven't seen since the first dungeon. But hopefully you remember, you just have to make their uh, sigils match, their, their suits match rather, in order to get the compass. Yeah, kind of a weird time to bring those enemies back. We saw them in the first dungeon, and then we haven't seen them since. Interesting. And, but either way, we want to throw the ball not onto the spikes, but into that room because we'll be back to get it later. Now we want to head west into another anti-Kirby's grasp. I do have to wonder, uh... Why they decided to bring in so many cameo characters. Huh. Also, don't head south here, it's not necessary at all. I was... Uh, thinking of, the, I think, one of the next floors, actually. Oh god, where's Rubes Run? Either way, up here, there's a couple things we can do. We, you can either head east, but you don't want to. You want to head up north into another tile room. You know what to do by now. Kill the spark, or anti-fairy. Stand in the bottom right corner, and shield up. You are now untouchable. Enjoy your non-invincibility for a short time, young ones. How did that last one break? Either way, we're back in the room with the third pillar. Uh, keep in mind this room again for later, because I will be coming back here eventually. Either way with that, that's pillar number three broken. And now I want to push that block and head actually back to the east. Oh god, it almost bounced into the hole. Uh, if it falls into any of the holes, it does reset to the original room, so watch out for that. Also, here's an interesting thing, if I recall correctly, uh, that I can remember. Uh, there's some strategies for this dungeon that require you to actually carry this b uh, ball down and upstairs. You don't actually ever need to do that, but you can. It is a strategy you can do. 
I don't know, you want to go down there and throw it into that little area. And now we actually want to head back downstairs and eventually find ourselves back in the room south of the tile room, which is what I shall cut to right now. Because now we want to head south with the boomerang equipped for a bit of a rematch. Hinox is back, only this time he's red and likes to throw bombs a little bit. However, four boomerangs take him out. This thing is broken. And for doing that, we get a small key and a fairy. However, you want to fall down any of the far left holes. Because that brings us over to the western ledge of the first floor, which if you recall correctly, there was a chest in the top left, which happens to be... Secret Seashell number 26, the final one in the game, though for us it's just 20 rupees. With that, Secret Seashells are now done and over with. Only one piece of heart left. And I had to take care of those guys off screen once again, because that took like three minutes. And that's a chest that we can't quite reach yet, but wait, there's a barrier there we can throw this over at least. I do believe, actually, that that, uh... Owl statue up there hints towards you doing what I just did. Which is odd because, well, first off, now we're back in the third pillar room. If you notice, there was these torches here that totally don't have a bombable wall between them. Which lead into another totally not bombable wall, which will actually lead us right to that owl statue. If you can't go over the poles, try throwing things you have in your hands. See, he hints right towards that. Either way, we destroyed those three of a kind enemies so we could get that chest over there so we could bring ourselves over to it. Which contains a refill of bombs. And now we can finally destroy pillar number four. I think we broke it. Either way, with that, we're now done with the ball. We never need to touch it again. Now we can fall down here, back to the dungeon's entrance, and actually head towards the boss. And now we're back in the room where I got the mirror shield. Now we can head over to here. Unlock this. Make sure that these blocks are raised in this particular order, by the way. Mind you, you need to in order to head south there, so... Huh. And now I want to head into these stairs to go upstairs. Oh, hey, Iron Mask. Haven't seen you guys in a while. You want to head north and... East. Hey, Runt. You think you can take me? All right, boys, get this punk out of my face. This guy's name is like Skull Wrangler or something, but he's actually a really, really pathetically easy mini boss. He summons six little bats and sends them at you. If you fail to take them all out, he summons another six. Ha! Huh, that's all you've got. Get ready for this. All you have to do is stand in one place like this, or wherever is appropriate to their formation. And continuously slowing, and you've won the mini-boss. That easily. You dirty rat, you beat my brothers! You'll pay. Uh, that's totally not, uh, uh, I'll never forget you. That wasn't an obvious censorship of kill. Either way, up here we want to do some things. First off, we want to kill the sparks just to get them out of our faces. Thank you for the health. Hit this once, and now push the blocks towards the center. This admittedly takes me a bit to remember every time. But for doing that, we get the Nightmare's Key. So now we are pretty much done in the dungeon. We can just head right to the boss fight. Sort of. The Eagle Tower is a bit unique in the sense that its boss tower door, which first off is right here, doesn't immediately lead to the boss. There's a bit of a trek to it. If you want to get to the boss, you have to head up those stairs right there and hookshot to the other side. But I want to head north and then east first for this little room. Doing the little puzzle in here, which is used, obvious, gets you another secret medicine. By the way, you can only have one of these, so... That was just me getting that chest to say I got the chest. Which means I kind of wasted a potion there. But mind you, I wouldn't never track into, the, track in this, to, into this place just for that uh, potion ever in my life, because I don't like this place too much. Either way, hookshot over to here. And we're more or less good. Head upstairs for the boss fight. Then you have to head up here for the boss fight. Bah! I'm not gonna hold back. I'm gonna make you wish you were never born. That is the evil eagle. The real boss. After he jumps on his back, the boss fight begins. 
Now, you're supposed to be on the actual top of the tower, which, first off, by the way, he takes three uh, spin attacks to kill with the level two sword. You're supposed to be on top of the tower and be able to knock off, uh, which, well, if you're knocked off, his HP regenerates, but if you just stand here, you can never be knocked off and just spam him in the face. My energy gone, I lost, but you'll be lost too if the windfish awakes. Same as me, you are in his dream. Ah, you're bullshitting me. Either way, yeah, the boss is really easy if you know that strategy. If you don't, it might be a bit difficult. Either way, we can finally head down here, head up, and we get the instrument. We've got the organ of evening calm. Ocarina. The music of the ocarina leads. What? Well, either way, with that, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 14, we'll be heading towards the final dungeon. Of the main eight, at least. See you guys then.